every student who signs up for a digital systems course receives a brand new solderless breadboard from Abra Electronics in their parts kit. In this video, I want to show you how to assemble your solderless breadboard for use in our labs. So this is how your breadboard comes and uh, you can see it's uh, stapled shut. So the first thing we need to do is to open up these staples. Uh, there's your package with your uh, binding posts and uh, rubber feet to go on the bottom. And there is the uh, breadboard. This is the breadboard. And this is just a little metal base they've got for you to, to uh, put your binding posts onto. Okay, so one of the things I want you to notice is that these holes are circular and they have a little flat spot on them. So each one is circular with a little flat spot. They're labeled VA, VB, and this is the symbol for ground. So what we're going to do is put the red uh, binding post in here, followed by the black binding post, followed by the green binding post. So, as I open these up, make sure you don't lose any of the parts. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, the red binding post. And you can see there's a nut on the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the nut off. And uh, make sure you keep it. The next piece on here is a little washer. So I'll put that down with the nut because we don't want to lose that. And then you can see that you can unscrew the top piece and you can keep unscrewing it it won't fall off okay and then if you slide this down it comes off and you can see that there's a uh, little metal washer there uh, this one's stuck right in there okay uh, I'm just gonna pry it out here to show it to you there it is it comes out okay so there's the little metal washer Okay, so if all this falls apart on you, I want you to be able to put it back together again. So you can see that there is a uh, kind of a groove in here, which is where the washer goes. So that little metal washer goes right in there, and it just snaps in there. Okay, and this is the post part, and as I said before, do this with a black wire you can see that there is a hole right through the center of it okay so that's where your bare wire goes so it makes good electrical contact okay so this part here goes on to the metal like so okay now when you look at this you can see that there is a little flat spot on here that little flat spot has to line up with the flat spot on here. Okay, we call it keyed. So it goes in this way. And if you look on the back here, you can see that the flat spot has to line up for it to sit in flush. Okay, and once it's in there fairly flush, it won't rotate so much. Okay, so. You might need a friend to help you hold this all together. Or you might be able to do it yourself. Okay, so the flat spot goes right along the top there, okay? The next thing that goes in is this other plastic washer that fell off the bottom. It has a flat spot. Do not put the flat spot against the post, okay? Because if, if you do, there's there's too much play in here so what I do is I have the uh, little flat spot on the outside so it's not being used and then we can screw the nut back in on top so it just slides right in like so and turns clockwise okay so that's not going to be very tight as it is right now so what I do is I take either a drill bit or a finishing nail or a paper clip 
and put it right through the hole so it goes through there like so and then you can hold it with your fingers and then on the other side you can tighten the nut up I like to use a nut driver so it's got a handle on it and the size of this thing is approximately uh, 9 30 second inches so you hold with one hand the drill bit or whatever you've used to go through the uh, center hole and you take your nut driver put it on and you just twist it so that it's tight okay um, so the rule of thumb is most of this stuff is plastic so you don't want to over tighten it so if you can just do it until it, it feels snug and then give it another quarter turn then it's on there perfectly it's just like changing the oil filter in your car you put it on finger tight and then you put the wrench on and give it another quarter turn so when you tighten this up you should be able to untighten it or loosen it without the whole thing rotating and falling off okay so there is the uh, red one on I'm going to do the next uh, one which will be the black one so off comes the nut off comes that little plastic washer and just unscrew it from the top there and you can see the hole there I'm not going to take the whole thing off it seems to be on pretty snug okay so I'm just going to put it onto the breadboard make sure that the key does line up like so so it's lined up fits in the hole take my uh, I'm using a drill bit in this case just hold on to it there take the plastic washer and make sure it's keyed side out because we don't want to use the key and then take the nut put the nut on and just do it up turning it clockwise sometimes it takes a couple goes before it goes on correctly then take the nut driver and holding on to the drill or the paper clip, whatever you used, just until it's tight, and then give it another quarter turn. And then it's on there pretty tight. Okay, so I've done the red one and the black one. Now we're going to do the green one. So just take the, the nut off, like so, the little plastic washer. Unscrew the top piece here. There we go. Put the green one in. Uh, turn it around. Make sure that the key lines up. Okay, so I got the key lined up. A little plastic washer. Make sure the key is on the outside, not the inside, or it'll wobble all over the place. Put the nut on just finger tight, so it takes a few tries turn it on key okay. then take your paper clip or your drill bit or whatever you happen to have that's handy put it in the hole then take your nut driver now if you don't have a nut driver the other tool you can use this is an adjustable crescent wrench okay so you just have to tighten it up until it's just on there okay just on there and give it a turn okay so as you can see the crescent wrench is a little more bulky just tighten it up there alrighty and let go turn it around and tighten this up okay you want to get it finger tight and then loosen it up and the whole thing shouldn't turn on you okay so there we go so those are the three binding posts on there. Now, to put the feet on the bottom, uh, what we want is one foot on each corner. And when you're using this breadboard, you're going to be pressing parts into the breadboard. So you'd like another foot in the center here somewhere, which just below this center screw here will be perfect. So you'll notice that the feet come with a little piece of wax paper on there. So you just take the wax paper off and put the foot in the corner 
and push it down to make sure that the glue sticks to the metal. Then take the next foot and put it in the other corner. Now notice I'm not measuring these, I just like them to be in a little bit. Okay. Press it down. Take the next foot. Put it in the next corner. There we go. Push it down so it's on nice and tight. Take the fourth one. Put it in the fourth corner. Push it down so it's tight. So now we've got all four. And then I said I like to put one in the center because if you put your board down okay, and push on it, you can see that it actually flexes a little bit. So I'm going to take the coating off the, the fifth foot. And I'm just going to put it underneath that screw. Okay, so it's just in the center there, underneath the screw, and push it on. Okay, so those are my five feet. And then when I push down on the board, it's got some support underneath, and it's good to go. So if I'm assembling the uh, breadboard for you, one of the last things that I will do is affix one of these uh, Avery uh, 6576 white permanent durable labels. So you can see they're one and three quarter by one and a quarter inch in size. A box like this will set you back about $60. These are specifically made to be uh, printed out using a uh, laser printer and uh, you can see we can get about 32 labels per sheet. So I usually put these labels in the uh, top left hand corner and just push down on them so that the glue seals. So this is our solderless breadboard once it's been assembled. So in closing, I just want to show you a completed breadboard with a circuit wired on it. Uh, this is for a digital lab and you can see our trainer is populated with some ICs and we have connecting wires which are 22 gauge solid wires and we have our uh, label affixed to the trainer so that everybody's trainer is individually numbered.